All right. So we are teaching on the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. We are teaching on the gift of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The purpose of teaching on this, it's actually the same thing. We we've been teaching on faith, then we transitioned in faith to remember I told you you have faith in God, faith in the word and faith in the power of God. So where we are, we are dealing with faith in the power of God. Amen. And then we are just exploring, you know, you shall receive power, accessing power, um, a generation of power. All of that is in the area of the uh, faith and the power of God. Amen. So even this, the gifts of the spirit is the power of God. Hallelujah. It is what? The power of God. So our root scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 4. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in the demonstration, the exhibit, right? The showing forth of the spirit and what? Power. Hallelujah. The demonstration of what? The spirit and what? And power. Why did I demonstrate the spirit? Why did I demonstrate power? For a reason. Next verse. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the what? In the power of God. That means you cannot develop faith in the power of God through just the preaching. Hello. If we only preach, you will never develop faith in the power of God. You must see it demonstrating. Uh, demonstrated. Amen. Amen. So, faith in the, in the power of God comes by what? Demonstration. Hello. Faith in the power of God comes by what? By demonstration. By you seeing demonstration. If you never see demonstration, you can never have faith in the power of God. Hallelujah. So, you must see it. That's why Paul told Timothy, he says, the things you have heard from me and also seen. So, there were things he heard, there were things he saw. Hallelujah. So, those things he saw made him develop faith in the power of God. Look at Elisha, right? Elisha, Elisha sees Elijah demonstrating something. You see? He demonstrates, he gets to the river, he gets to the river Jordan and he hits his mantle on, uh, 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 in the waters, right? And when he hits the mantle, the Bible says the waters go hither and thither. Amen. Amen. Sound people, this thing's not balanced. Amen. It's like this. So it's disturbing me. Please fix it. So uh, he, he, he hits the, 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 the waters with the mantle. When he hits the waters with the mantle, the Bible says the waters split hither and thither. And he walks through it. What does Elisha do? He saw it. So how does he respond? He does the very same thing. You see that? He what? He does the very same thing. So he didn't hear a sermon about it. He saw it. You will notice a lot of Elisha's miracles were similar to Elijah's miracles. Why? There were things he saw. Hallelujah. There were things he what he saw. Remember, Elisha appears when uh, in chapter nineteen. He appears in chapter nineteen, right? He appears in the early stages of Elijah's ministry. So when he appears, he gets to see Elijah at work. And the Bible says he was the one who poured water on the hands of Elijah. Now, to pour water doesn't just mean to uh, 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 eh? he poured water on the hands. Angir. Hmm. So he followed him, even to the toilet. Amen. No, I'm serious. Everywhere he went, he, he, he was there. And then when he was done, he says, pour water. Everywhere, after eating, pour water. So he was always with the man. So he got to see everything he was doing. He was observing him like a hawk. And that's why when he then comes on the scene and it's time, he does similar things to him. See, similar things to uh, uh, Elijah. So the power of God, you must see it. The casting out of devils, our pattern of cast, how did we know? Jesus never cast out devils by saying, in the name of Jesus, out. It was the disciples who did that. So the disciples, when we saw Peter saying, in the name of Jesus, rise up. When we see Paul saying, eh, eh, in the name of Jesus, come out. What happened? That became something passed on. So when we then demonstrate the power of God, what happens? We repeat the same thing. You repeat what you have seen in the power of God. Glory to God. 
you repeat what you have what? of us, we start from what we have seen. It's important that you see. One of the ways in which I learned to move in the prophetic, in the area of a, a, a dealing which we, with witchcraft, I saw my spiritual father do it. You see, I saw my spiritual father do it. And the more I'd see him do it, I would, okay, alright, and I'd notice similar patterns. You know, I'd notice similar patterns, similar patterns, similar patterns, similar patterns. That didn't come from preaching. I had to see him do the prophesying. There will be certain things as I minister prophetically, you will see they are similar to him. Why? I saw it. There's something about the human eye that when you have seen, you capture that thing. Yes, Praise the Lord. So you must see the power of God. That's why there are times, you know, there are times we must dedicate, you know, to just flowing in the power of God. Just flowing in the power of God. I think the people of Mamilodi get to see me moving in the power of God more, right? Just it's important that you see that. It's important that you see what it looks like to set people free, to set the captives free. Not just to hear that the captives can be set free, but seeing it take place. As you see it take place, you can now go and repeat what you have seen. Amen. Glory to God. So, the power of God comes by what? Seeing. It comes by exhibition. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, all of us. Now let's go to Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Oh Lord. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Shala brakata la baroska. Let's all read. 1, 2, 3, go. But you shall receive power. Yeah. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Amen? So when the Holy Spirit comes, he comes with what? Power. He comes with what? Power. He comes with inherent power. I told you, it's inherent power. It's power, it's potential power. L let me put it this way, it's seed power then. Hello? It's what? It's seed power. And I need you to understand this, right? All the power, right, that the believer will ever need comes to him the day the Holy Ghost arrives. Hello? Even what we call impartation, we are only doing that because you are still a child. The day you mature, you can stir up the power yourself. And this is true for everybody. There is no more power given now. There are special abilities. Oh God. Hey, I pray we grasp this. Are you, are you all here? There are special abilities, right? Given... Maybe this is going to be a bit of mathematics. Ne? Can we do a bit of mathematics? Eh? We can do a bit of mathematics. Ne? Now, the gifts of the spirit which we are going to explore, right, are only a foretaste of what really lies within the believer. What lies, what is within the believer is far beyond the gifts of the spirit. But that is the starting point. So, in the fivefold, even what we demonstrate as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, we are only showing a 10% of what is already within the believer. The believer has the Holy Ghost. You he doesn't just have an anointing. He has the person of the Godhead. He has the one who empowered Jesus. He has him in his fullness. The only thing is to learn to walk with that person. If a believer, and you know, the Bible showed us with Stephen. Stephen was never given an office. Hello, church. Stephen was never given an office. There's never a time. People say he was apostolic, but that's us. The Bible says Stephen was a man full of power, full of the Holy Ghost, full of faith. Are those things not available to the believer? So there was no office at work. Yet the Bible says, without an office, he manifested signs and wonders that made even Pharisees and Sadducees pay attention. Are you hearing me? So, the offices, we glorify offices, but we don't understand that the believer has been given something deeper than an office. 
The offices are only an administration. We are given a privilege to show you what's possible. That's why the Bible says we are given these offices until we arrive at the place called the Son of God. When believers arrive at sonship, there's no point to offices anymore. Hello. You shall receive what? Power. When the Holy Spirit has what? Has come upon you. And you shall be what? Witnesses to me. You will be my proof. So the purpose of the power is to prove that Jesus is alive. You can't prove that Jesus is alive only with a speech. Look at this. Let, let, let's look at it. Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6. Let's look at it. Shabraka talabaroska palakila baria. Amen. May we know what has been invested in the believer, in the child of God. Praise the Lord. To be a child of God is not to be a religious person. Hallelujah. It's not to be a religious person. So, the context is, there was, uh, okay, let's read it. Now, in those days when the number of disciples were multiplying, there, were, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Politics in the church has always been there. <laughs> Mostly amongst women. Then the 12th, <laughs> it's, it's Bible, it's Bible, I'm not creating anything. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and what and serve what tables. There's a there's a false teaching moving around in the body of Christ today to say that as pastors we mustn't be celebrities, we must also go and be able to be with the people. That's dangerous. There are pastors who portray it's it's, it's false humility. Ne? You know, I also come early and I... Pack. No, you are disservicing the church by doing that. I also come early and as a pastor, I, I pack the chairs. No, you should be praying. You should be praying. In the beginning, that is okay. Hello? In the beginning, that is what? Okay. Because there are no people. But once the necessary people arrive, stop doing that. They say it is not good that we should what? Live... That means by serving tables, they leave the word. So it's not celebrity. It's giving the pastor the job of the East to pray. For as long as your pastor can pray and read the Bible, you will always succeed. You understand that, right? So he says, then the 12 summoned that it's not desirable that we should leave the word of God and, what, and serve what tables. Therefore, seek out from among you seven men of what? Good reputation. Right? full of the Holy Ghost, and what? And wisdom, whom we may appoint over this, what? This business. But we will do what? Give ourselves continually to prayer and to the what? The ministry of the word. That's what apostles, that's what the fivefold should be doing, praying, and if they do this, if all that pastors do is this, ne? you'll see what will happen. Look, look, look. It's just I won't have time to get there. Okay, continue. And the saying, can we read it together? One, two, three, go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. Do you notice a difference? Huh? <laughs> but Stephen. A man full of faith and the Holy Ghost. And then Philip and Mang Mang and Mang Mang and Mang Mang and Mang Mang. What was it about Stephen? He, every time they must pause and say he was full of faith. He was full of the Holy Ghost. This means it was a characteristic about him that was undeniable before every person. When your, men, when your name is mentioned, what follows? Or is your name just mentioned? Huh? What is said? What, what follows your name? Or is it just uh, uh, Timothy and then uh, 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 Craig and then Prophet and then Jeffrey, a man? You see, what, 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 you, you see that? So what, what follows your name? And you see, it's not about what you do. This man, it's a life. 
You see, we, there's a lot of, everybody wants public shows. Everybody wants to be publicly powerful, publicly uh, uh, revelatory, publicly anointed, publicly gifted. No, this thing is about a secret life. It's about a secret life. If you, listen, the, the nature of your prayer life, your study life, all these things, they are in such a way, if you told nobody that you do it, it will still be seen. You can't hide prayer. You can't hide the word. You can't hide the anointing. It's in such a way that that, that, that substance, is it, it calls for attention when it's really there. It will make you be chosen. Listen, I wish we could do a test run of this. That I said, go to a certain church, be there for three months, just be heavy in prayer. Don't just get there, pray a lot. Just pray, just pray a lot at home. Then go to the service, worship the Lord, and go home. I guarantee you, soon, 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 they, there'll be something about you that will cause people just to come near you because the anointing is that way. It has a magnetic pull. People won't understand why they are attracted to you, but they'll just find themselves coming close to you. So this thing is not about what you do publicly. If you are failing public, there's, for me, there's no such thing, there's no such thing as public failure. There's no such thing as a public flop. You are a private flop first. You flop first in the private. Languja. You flopped first in the private. These things are cooked in the secret place. Listen, he says, and your father who sees in secret will reward you publicly. So what you are not seeing in public is because you've not seen it in private. Now, all right, now, those of you who've known me for for long in, in my prophetic ministry, I used to say this right now. It's like, hey, apostles prophesying a lot of time. I used to say, there's a prophetic dimension I see privately that I'm not seeing publicly. Remember, I used to say that. I said, there's how I am privately, but I'm not that way publicly. Now, I didn't go and force it. Who is it? I knew who I knew, and it's been years. Because the anointing is from there in the secret first. So some you must be a David who has learned to slay who has learned to slay bears and lions first before you face Goliath. So everybody wants to be a Goliath slayer. Have you faced a lion? Which lion have you defeated? Because if you've not defeated any lion, Goliath is finishing you. Listen, with Goliath, you don't rehearse. They are no re- that's not the time to rehearse. Goliath wants you sharp. What God has not allowed you to taste publicly is for your own safety. Are you hearing me? The platforms, the places that God has not allowed you to taste publicly is for your own safety because he knows it will kill you. I'm good it, right? So, this thing, work on yourself in the secret place. Pray in the secret place. Be anointed in the, be on fire for God in the secret place. Pray, pray. If nobody's seeing, God sees you. God sees you. Pray. Listen, that, that thing is, you will be, that thing calls for attention. Hello? Stephen, he hadn't, by this time, he hadn't ministered to anybody. But a man full of faith and the Holy Ghost. Let's read. Next verse. Whom they said before the apostles and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Yeah? Ha! Huh. Let's read. One, two, three, go. Yeah? Yeah? Increased impact. Why? The apostles were given room to pray. Increased impact. Increased impact. In, the Bible doesn't say evangelism increased. It says the word of God spread. There was an increase in the message. The message was more impactful. When the Bible says so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed, it's not talking about evangelism. It's talking about the strength of the word in the region. 
There is a message that affects territories. Hello? There is a message that affects territories. Look at John G. Lake. History says, right, the place where he was at, spoken, became the healthiest place on the face of the planet. <laughs> Imagine, a man's anointing was so heavy, it affected a region. It affected a region. Why? That man was allowed to pray. Then, Stephen, again, <laughs> Stephen, full of faith. Now he's graduated. It was at spirit. Spirit is first level. Spirit is force. Spirit is wind. But then here is, is full of faith. Then it says power. The word power is dunamis. Miraculous abilities. So now, his ministry was bending the laws of nature. He wasn't just someone who inspired you. You see, when a man is full of the spirit, he will inspire you. But you could be inspired and remain the same. Have you ever been by, inspired by a message that didn't change your life? There's a mess, there are messages, they are inspirational. They make us shout. It's spirit. But it didn't shift anything. The shifting part is power. The shifting part is power. That's why we must contend for power. We don't just want to inspire a generation. We want to cause a generation to be shifted. Things must move when we talk. Atmospheres must bow when we talk. Demons must obey when we talk. There must be, man, there must be a display of power, not just inspiration. Are you hearing me? There must be a show, there must be a movement, there must be a shift. That's why we talk about test. A testimony means something shifted. So Stephen went beyond inspiration. Now you are shifting things. Say, I will be a person who shifts things. Yeah. Be, be, this thing must be so full inside of you at work. You are pushing testimonies like you are a senior pastor. Ah, oh, I'm good, you know? Oh, this can disappoint me. Listen, you must be so praying for people at work. You go, you, you, you go home, you pray, you get yourself full of the Holy Ghost. When you are full of the Holy Ghost, when you are full of the Holy Ghost, it's in such a way, right, that that feeling, the Bible says the kingdom of God is like a, a mustard seed, right, which was the smallest. And when it grew up, it became in such a way that all the birds came. When you are full of fruit, people are attracted to you. When you have something to give, people are, the spirit himself will draw people to you. So if nobody's coming to you at work, you've got nothing. You've got, why, why, why must the spirit pull people to you? Because you're only going to embarrass his reputation. You must be so full that when people come, you say, no, I, not I know Melchizedek. Ish, man, hey, this I know Melchizedek thing. Hey, nah, I, I can't. This referral generation. Hey. This generation that's mighty. In, I know a man of God. No. No, I know a God. I am full of God. Look at Philip. He goes into a city. Not as an evangelist. He goes in as one of, one of, one of the hospitality team. There's a big persecution. And he's part of the hospitality team. He also runs away. But at least he ran away to cause impact. He enters Samaria. The Bible says he preached until the whole city. The whole city, there was joy. The Bible says the man, Philip, we didn't see that with the apostles. He was the first one to convert a witch. As a hospitality man. Before an office. After the office, I saw No, after office, Ramonaira, big things. No, the Bible just says, Philip the evangelist, he had daughters. Seven daughters who prophesied. Now, a city shaking. Because the office got to his head. There are people. 
people, the worst thing that happened was us telling them their offices. They were okay until they knew they had an office. Now apostle, now prophet, now now a twafa. When you when you were a believer, you prayed, you fasted, you loved the Lord. You were not doing it for anything or any charging of an office. Philip, without a title, he goes into Samaria. He turns the city upside down. The Bible says he was casting out devils. The Bible says the lame started to walk. Hospitality man. The Bible says he so preached until Simon himself believed. Hello? Imagine now, a person in the media, in the media, decides to go. But there's a person, you go, you are causing, your eruptions are going on. As apostles, we come just, you know. <laughs> you know. No, hey, you know. <laughs> but are you hearing me? Well, the apostles did the lesser part. They were just, okay, let's get people filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, okay, it's a great part. But Philip turned the city upside down. He caused the shaking without an office. And the Bible does not tell us he had other people. He was one man. One man. One man so carried God. A city shook. The Bible says there was great joy in the city. May you be such a person that your company shakes, that there is a vibration where you are. You are demonstrating God. You are demonstrating God everywhere you go. You demonstrate God. Amen? Look, full of faith and what power. Did great what? Wonders. You know what's a wonder? It means people were up. It's a wonder. It means you shocked. People were shocked with this man's ministry. Shocked, and he wasn't even trying. He was just, he was just a table server. I'm saying all of this. I'm getting to the gifts, but I want you to understand what is inside of you, what Jesus has invested in you by the person of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is an investment from heaven. Heaven has an investment in you. What will be the returns? What will be the returns from God giving you what he has given you? What does he stand to reap? What does he stand to reap? There are people, they are a bad investment from heaven. Heaven, heaven is like, hey, Marmola. Yeesh. That's what God said. He says, I regret making Saul a king. Meaning bad investment. God invested, but it was a bad one. May you be a good investment. May you be a good investment. That God can put more of his power, more of his glory inside of you. Hello? Well, he's not putting it. He's unlocking it. He's unlocking more, more dimensions of his power. He increases the measures. He increases the measure. He allows you to go deeper and deeper. And you can be trusted with his power. Power. There are levels of the power of God that are in entrustment. You can dig and dig and dig. But there are places in the well where God will not give you until he can trust you now. Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 16. I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, the source of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. In the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding. Now this is very important, right? He says the eye, the spirit of wisdom and revelation will give you the knowledge of him. It will give you, the word knowledge there is epignosis. Maybe when I have time I'll explore that, right? It's full and correct knowledge based on experience. Not just language only it's experiential knowledge so the spirit of wisdom and revelation doesn't just teach you the word he brings you into the experience of the word right then he says the eyes of your heart being enlightened right it is the greek word enlightened is for tizo it means to switch on the light in a dark room so it gives a picture 
that everything you need is already there. But what you think you don't have is only because the light is not on. So, the power of God you have, but you need for Tizo to realize that it's there. Hello? You need what? For Tizo. You need the light to be switched on. Do you notice when the light is off in this place, right? You will look for things over and over and some things you may assume they are not even here. Simply because, not because they are not here, but because you can't see. That's why the Bible says this. It says, light is that which makes manifest. Manifest means tangible. So, things become tangible to you when light comes. So there are times, it's like as I'm talking right now, right? There's a light that's coming to your spirit. And you suddenly realize, oh, I have this thing. You realize what you have, not what you should be looking for. Hello? Are we all here? He says, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. For what reason? That you may know the hope of his calling. Meaning, know why he has called you. Number two, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Meaning, what does God stand to gain from, his, from the saints? He says, I, he says, I'm praying this so that you may know. What does God stand from saving you? Why did God save you in your family? In the whole community, why did he decide to save you? In the whole school, why did... He says... I want you to know why God did it. Yeah. There was something he stood to gain. Why did you get born again first before your friends? There was an investment. God was, it was an investment. Praise the Lord. Amen. Then he says, ha. Ah. He says, and what is, ha. Ah. So he says that you may know, right? It's, 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 what do you call this thing? It's, the word know also means idol. It means conscious, right? So that you may know, that you may be enlightened. Know what is there, right? So he says, number one, the hope of your calling. Number two, the riches of his investment in the saints, right? Then he says, what is there? Hey. Ah. Hey. Isn't the man of God said, this is the power scripture of the Bible, it's a power verse. A power, he says all the words of power are here and it's true. All the power words are here. He says the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. He says the word exceeding greatness, the word exceeding né, is the Greek word hupa. Right? It means to throw Beyond the mark. You see that? It means to throw what? Beyond the mark. So he, he says, he has given us more power than is necessary. What is inside of us? Is more than our assignment requires. You have more power. It, it's hupa balo, right? Then it says megatos. It's exceeding great power. Power that's beyond comprehension. And he says, it's towards us who believe. Are you a believer? Yep. Yes, so that thing is inside of you. Amen. Then he says, it is according to the energizing of his mighty power. He says, the word according, right, is a musical term. It means it makes the same sound. So he says, this power is equal to the power, right? To the power, according to the working of his mighty power, yeah? Which he what? Worked in Christ. When he what? Raised him from the dead. He says, what's inside of you is equal to resurrection power. Now, that power, ne? he says, is number one, resurrection power, Right? Then he says, it raised him from the dead, right? Then he says, it what? It seated him. So that power didn't just raise Jesus from the dead. It made Jesus, it's the same power that made him levitate before the saints. It's the same power that made him pass through space. Enter the heavens. 
and sit on the right hand of God. He says, that's what's available in you. That's more than all the gifts of the Spirit put together. Praise the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 12. So you must know how to stir up the power. Power is stirred up. Hello. Power is what is stirred up. We stayed up. We stayed up. And at different levels of your life, right? So, one of these things. King, the second breaker. Ne? Is that a second breaker? The second breaker determines how much power the thing can handle. Ne? Am I right? Yeah? So, there are certain levels of power, right? They overwhelm the thing and make it trip. So that's why people fall under the power. Okay? He's too mad. His power, I like why. Because the same power that's making you fall is flowing from me. Why am I not falling? It's a power dimension I'm used to. I'm serious. There are different levels of power. There are different levels of power. There are different levels of power. So now with you, right? At every level, you, 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 the, all the power is there, right? All the power is there. But God grants you access. He allows certain measures depending on your growth. You see that? So the more faithful you are with this level of power, he unlocks a new one. So it feels like something is coming from heaven, but it's not coming from heaven. It's just an unlocking of what's inside. So if you can be faithful with a thousand volts, he'll entrust you with ten thousand. So then when you are faithful, so some people, you, God has given you access to a thousand volts, but all you ever use is a hundred. Hello. Why not? It's been ten years. You are only on a hundred. But your capacity is actually a thousand. Learn to function at maximum capacity so that God can promote you all the time. Keep yourself, the Bible talks about the high calling. Keep yourself in the height of your calling. Keep yourself in the height of your gift. Prepare well. Hello? Prepare well. Keep yourself fired up. Keep yourself fired. Let the fire always be on, on steroids. Even on steroids. Oh, this man, I must promote him. I tell people that I don't get drained. Because I'm always functioning in maximum capacity. I ensure, Lord, I am at the place where I'm available. I'm available. When I get drained, I worry. Oh, drainage. Oh, Apostle, I was ministering so much. <laughs> you, 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 at the beginning, it starts off that way. Mara, you must graduate to a place where you ministered, but you didn't feel it. Because you gave people your overflow. It's not, it's not, it's not, I say this to my wife all the time. It wasn't even my message. It's like, no, I haven't started the message. It's just, no, it's the truth. If you check my notes, these are not in my notes. Everything I've said for the past is not in my notes. It's just overflow. It's not being braggadocious. It's a realm I live in. I, I live in the fire. It's a choice to live in the fire. Paul says, don't neglect the gift. He says, keep it aflame, keep it aflame, keep it aflame. So there are different levels of fire. So Malata, Malata, Akonono, Fisanyan, Anger. Then you can, and then the boom. Hello? So Baba, Malata, how are you going to Range, Raoul, Roy. But it's not dangerous yet. There's a fire that's dangerous. There's a power that's dangerous. Oh, you are you 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 are a danger, but hafar in gozi. demons, my my resolution, demons must fear my territory. 
They must fear my territory. They must fear flying around La Montagne. It must be a dangerous thing. It must be a day, and it must be so strong. It must be noted in the realm of the spirit. With people who are not in this church. Or in this church, well, I'll tell you testimony. Pastor, I saw a vision at uh, uh, first level. There must be one who has never met me. And say, hey, there's a man of God who lives in La Montagne. Who was it? Was it Mabuza? There was someone who was trying to bewitch me, right? Trying to bewitch me because I had delivered his wife, right? That person, I didn't even know. The person took things, you know those things, Barbabo fell, let's go carrying in a mountain. Da, 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 da. They were doing all those things. I didn't know. It couldn't even touch me. Why? The strength of the fire. Yeah. Your fire must be so strong that you don't even feel it. Oh, you hear it. Oh, oh, oh. So you are trying to bewitch me. Oh. Alangudra. Yeah. Believers. We must get back to our roots. You must fast. What's yeah. fasting? Wara. You, you must, you must, you see, it looks like we are doing religious talk, but there's a power in people who do that all the time. Yeah. <coughs> there's a power. You can't live a life where at least once a week you fast and you are powerless. Hello? It doesn't, it doesn't happen. And the nature of fasting is that it keeps you hungry for God. It keeps you hungry for spiritual things. You must loathe. You must loathe. You must loathe worldin, worldli, worldin, eh? worldliness. You must loathe it. There must be things you look at. Or, I need to go pray. You must. There must be things. Or, ay, nah. You must, I told you, even with food, there must be times where you're like, no. Where will you think, well, if I put this in my mouth right now, it's going to be difficult to ascend in the realm of the spirit. So I'll see it after the realm of the spirit. But even after the realm of the spirit, I still don't want it. You are safe when you are like that. First Corinthians chapter 12. This thing you must must burn. You must must burn. Must burn. Must burn. People must manifest. Come, miracle. Wow. People must manifest. People repeat. That's one said you will move hearts by your arrival. Yeah, you must so carry God. Yeah, they don't want to repeat. I didn't see if we both fit. They locked. They are locked away now. No, you must carry. You must carry. Do you understand who the Holy Ghost is? The power of heaven. So carry him that even sinners have dreams that they must come to you for deliverance. Yesterday I had a dream and Margit Lokoena for help. That's how you know you are making weight. You are not conversing for yourself. Test these things in the realm of the spirit. Or I want to be a heavy weight. That I bring attention, that my waves are heard in the realm of the spirit. Yeah, you are saying, I'm a heavy weight. I'm a heavy weight. I won't say it, but I will say it. There will be things that I will do that will force the people to come back. Hey, we need the God that you serve. We need, help me, pray for me. There's something about you. It, then you know what you have is not just talk, it's real. All right, let's read. One, two, three, go. Yeah. Yeah. So he says, concerning spiritual gifts or the spiritual, I don't want you to be what? Uninformed. So he's dealing with more than just spiritual gifts here, right? He starts with the spiritual gifts. Then he comes to oneness in the body. Talks about oneness in the body of Christ, right? Then he enters uh, spiritual ministries, right? So they are what we call, and we'll enter them. Spiritual, we'll talk about them as time goes on. Spiritual ministries uh, like tongues, the ministry of tongues. So there's the gift, right? The gift of the spirit speaking in tongues. But then there's the ministry 
of speaking in tongues. You see that. Then there is the gift of the spirit, working of miracles, and gifts of healings, right? But then there is the ministry of healing. The ministry of miracles. Where your ministry is not preaching, it's miracles. Do you believe these things? Your ministry is to do miracles. These are what you call, the Bible calls them miracle workers. Their job, they, they just get there, they put things together. Then he enters, then he starts talking about love. When he talks about love, he talks about how the reason why he talks about love in, with the gifts of the spirit is because the Bible says the gifts of the spirit are for the profit of us all. Right? They profit the church. When I flow in the gifts, they profit the church. But if I do that without love, the church will profit, but I won't profit. That's why he says if you do this and you have not love, it profits you nothing. So love ensures that both the church profits and you profit as well. That's why Paul says, lest when I have preached to others, I should become a castaway. So love ensures that after you have moved in the gifts, you don't become a castaway. Hello? Amen. Then he enters and then he tells, then, then he says, pursue love now. He says, pursue love and then spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. And then he ends the talk on spiritual things when he now talks about the resurrected body. He talks about our spiritual body that is to come. He says, that body is prepared for us. So that's the whole talk on the spiritual. Amen? Now, then he says, you know that you were carried, you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb, silent idols. He says, you were serving things that could not respond. So he says, our God can respond. So this left, the gifts of the spirit are the responses of God. Hello? Next verse. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And that no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Saying that the gifts of the Spirit will always exalt Jesus Christ. Amen? When properly executed, men give glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. When the gifts are what? Properly executed, men give glory to Jesus. Then he says, there are diversities of gifts. But what? The same spirit. They are differences of what? Of ministries, but the same what? Lord. And they are diversities of what? Activities. But it is the same God who works all in all. Right? But, can we read that together? One, two, three, go. You see what I said? So, the gifts of the spirit are the manifestation of the spirit. They say that the spirit is with, it is, the, it is the spirit wanting to show himself. But there's a capacity of him that you must carry for him to show himself. He doesn't just show himself because he's just there. There's a capacity that you must carry for him to show himself. So it is the outward expression of the Holy Spirit. Now, Bazalwan, as I am teaching on the gifts like this, the gifts are for everybody. Amen. Amen. All nine of these gifts you can flow in. Amen. Say, I can flow, I can flow in, the in the nine gifts of the Spirit. Say, I can flow in the nine gifts of the Spirit. Go to the last verse of this chapter. Go to the last verse of this chapter. Can we read it together? One, two, three, go. Wait, 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 wait. He says, earnestly what? Desire the best gifts. Was he talking to apostles? No. He's talking to the whole church. So, you ha so if you can get the best gifts, you can get all gifts. Amen. Uh, chapter 14, verse 1. Let's read. One, two, three, go. He says, desire spiritual gifts. Hello? Yes. Crave them. 
Hello? Crave them. Desire them. <sighs> amplified. Give me in the amplified. Amplified. In, in, in verse 1. Verse 1, the amplified. He says, pursue and seek to acquire this love. Make it your aim and great, greatest request. Then he says what? Earnestly desire and cultivate. So then there's the other side. Once you have, you cultivate. So once you have a gift of the spirit, you cultivate it. Amen? Once you have a gift of the spirit, you do what? You cultivate. What is to cultivate? It means to take the richness out of something. It means to develop something. Amen? Now this word, right? Can you give me the Greek word for, 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 for desire? Because I need us to catch the heart of the spirit. Because if I teach this and you think this is for pastors, there was no point for this service. There was no point for this teaching. Everybody can flow in the gifts of the spirit, whether worshiper or congregant or media person or whoever. Everybody can flow in you. There's no gift that has been said, right? The only thing you cannot desire is the offices, right? Because the offices are given by Jesus Christ. Amen? They are what? Given. There's no scripture that says desire offices. It doesn't exist. Amen? The only thing the Bible says, if you want to be an overseer, and an overseer is not necessarily an uh, an office. It's a role you play in the church, right? But uh, 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 the thing that we are told to desire is spiritual gifts. Amen? Spiritual gifts. Spiritual abilities. Right? What's the Greek word? What's the Greek word? Salute. What does it mean? To burn with zeal. To burn with zeal? Yeah. To be heated. To be heated. Or to boil with envy, hatred, or anger. Do you see? He gives a negative connotation of the gift or of desire. But it's only to emphasize the strength of how much you must want them. So, it's literally... Uh, what, what, what's that second part that you just read now? It says what? To be heated or boil with envy, hatred, or anger. Envy, hatred, and anger. Do you realize those emotions make you do certain actions? So, it is... He, he's saying, don't just go for them. Be obsessed about them first. The obsession will create action. Once you become obsessed with the gifts, now you are ready to kneel down and start asking for them. You are ready to start praying about them. You are ready to start studying them. You see that? Because the gifts, right? The gifts of the spirit, you must desire them, right? You must pray for them, right? You must study them. You must study them functioning in the lives of people. So that means you are able to look at somebody who's moving in a gift that you desire. And you start looking, how do they move in this gift? How do they function in this gift? It's, an obs it's like you wake up thinking about it. You sleep thinking about it. It's, it's, it's an obsession. Amen. More? Yes? In a good sense, to be zealous yes. in the pursuit of good. Yeah. To desire earnestly, yeah. to pursue, yeah. to strive after, yeah. to busy oneself about him. Do you see? To busy one's self. So you busy yourself with the gifts. You want to know more about the gifts. Amen? So there are nine of them, right? There are nine gifts of the spirit, right? Um, let's, let's, let's list them, right? Let's list them. Mm, go to the scripture. Go back to First Corinthians chapter 12. I believe we're going to start at verse 7. Eh? Do we start at verse 7? Yeah. He says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of what? Of all. Now, the profit of all. So you don't just want the gifts for the sake of wanting the gifts. You want the gifts because of what they are able to do. Amen? So why I am teaching on the gifts is so that you know, number one, what they are. What they can do. Right? And also realize what, why you should have them in your life. Amen. If you don't understand why you must have the gifts of the Spirit, you'll never pursue them. If you don't understand their role, or what, or what they can do, and with all of you, right, there will be certain gifts that are more stronger in terms of desire than others. The great part is when you can get to a place where you realize all of them, because every gift is important depending on the situation. Praise the Lord. So, with a person who needs healing, prophecy is important, but with a person who needs healing, they don't need prophecy, they need healing. 
So it depends on the need. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's read. One, two, three, go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, first two is what? Word of wisdom and word of knowledge. Write those down. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Those are the first two. Right? Okay, let's list all of them. Then he says to another faith. So, this is not the believer's faith. Right? It's not the faith you receive the day you get born again. It's special faith. Praise the Lord. And we will, we will go into depth. But it says by the spirit. Right? Then he says to another what? Gifts of healings. Very important. Plural. Plural. Laiban. Plural by way of this is a gift. Okay, this thing is one gift. Ne? That has many gifts within it for many situations. Hello? So, the gift of gifts of healings, right? Has gifts of healings within. It's the one gift that has many gifts. Right? Because healing is so diverse. Even if you study medical science, just be, you realize that there are different categories of sicknesses. So a lot of times with the gifts of healings, you'll notice that there are then specialities in the gifts of healings. So you'll be strong in certain areas and strong. So you will receive, no one receives just the, 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 yeah, no one receives the, the ability to just deal with all sicknesses, right? That power voltage may be too much at the beginning of your life, right? So what happens is God gives you this ability, right? Of course, there are certain, you may see a lot of sicknesses healed, but you'll notice there is a, 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 a prevalence of certain sicknesses. For example, in my own life, right? Feet, ulcer, deafness, stomach issues, common. Hello? So the gifts of healing, so I know these are the strengths of my ministry. You see, that? these are the gifts that are mostly at work when I flow in the healing anointing. Then you find another person. They are strong in certain areas. Strong in certain, and all these come by faithfulness. Amen? So you can be, if you can be faithful, the reason why I am being faithful with the Someone will say, oh yeah, Apostle, it's just feet, 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 feet. You don't know where the thing is going. It's going to wheelchairs. But God wants to see, because with, if God just gives me the ability to, to just say wheelchairs, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be self-centered in my operation of the gifts. The small healings teach you humility. They teach you humility. Number two, they teach you compassion, compassion. That you need to love people. You need to be concerned more about people getting healed than people clapping for you. must be humble. They have a God complex to it, to them. So when they function, do you know what will happen if you, listen, if they see you, there's a difference with raising the dead publicly, then raising the dead privately, right? So a lot of the raising of the dead right now is, is private. When it's public, listen. Men's praises will overcharge your hearts. You will fall down from the praises of men. So what God does is he does it little by little because now he's training your heart. Even with prophecy. Sometimes the long prophecy, go tell them that I love you. Oh, but God, I mean, I mean, do you know? No, go tell them that I love you. Yeah. Like more detail. No, I love you. What do you want? Why do you want the detail? You want to be seen. You want to be seen. Oh, may you <laughs> I, 
It's the truth. So what God does, he, he, he teaches you humility by starting you with the small. And if you can be faithful with the small, you will be faithful with this. And you will be more interested in seeing the people being blessed than just yourself shining. Praise the Lord. All right. So, to another, gifts of healings by the same spirit. Yeah. And then, to another, working of what? Miracles. Hey. What a gift. To another, what? Prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. Now, here, ne, just hang on. Ne? There's a difference between discernment and discerning of spirits. Every believer has discernment that needs to be developed by the word of God. But discerning of spirits is then a different thing altogether. It's the ability to notice the realm of the spirit. To see, to hear, to smell, to even gift of prophecy functions through these five channels. So most of the people, uh, or rather what our fathers taught us, and it was good for them, but as we graduate, the spirit of God reveals more, right? That actually the gift of prophecy, they said the gift of prophecy is an utterance gift. That's partially true because it's not only, it doesn't only function through utterance. It can function through hearing. It can function through knowing. It can function through visions. It can function through dreams. You can have prophecy by a dream. Because anything that reveals f the future is prophecy. So you can know the future by saying it out. You can know the future by just a knowing. You just know. You can know the future through visions. You can see through visions. You can know the future through a dream. And you can know the future through hearing the voice of God telling you. So not everything, is, when we say prophesying, people think all the time, people prophesy, there is, like God is standing here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's what we think is happening in Kaprovis. It's not true. You can see that. Who thought that's what happened? Thank you for your honesty. At times, right? At times, ne? you, you, with, especially with speaking. Let me, on Friday I prophesied, right? I was prophesying at prayer. And also on Sunday I was prophesying at prayer. In those times, right? There's a beautiful scripture. It's in the book of Psalms. It says, my heart recites a theme. Do you know that? It says, then he says, my tongue is like the pen of a ready writer. That's prophecy. That's a gift of prophecy. It says, my heart recites a theme. So, it can start as a theme. A topic. Ufa topic. No, like, this is true. Hello? He can give you what? A topic. So, the issue is, people hear the topic. I can handle, I can handle revelation. Because mm, sometimes you talk and talk until Clay Jam. Motu Jamile. Asalite. Kala Jamile. Attention gives them. It will always be for the exaltation of the saints, right? The protection of the saints and also the salvation of the people themselves. So it will always be in these three areas. It will never be for their own personal advancement. So it will either equal to the saints advancing, like with. With, with, with Pharaoh having this dream, right? It, 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 it also advanced Joseph, right? It also lead, it can bring salvation. Like with Paul. Paul had an encounter with the Lord Jesus. And what happened? It led to salvation. Cornelius had an encounter. which You understand? Cornelius had such an encounter that had details of streets and names. The angel said, there is Peter. Simon Peter. Name and surname. Who is at the house of Simon a tenor? That's detail. In his world, they say major. Yeah. Hello? Then he says, he is lodging by the beach. What detail? But this is a sinner receiving this. He's not, he's not a born again Christian. But what was the end result? He got born again. Amen? What the end result? He, so can sinners experience the gifts of the spirit? Yes. But what will be the result? Exaltation of the saints, protection of the saints, like 
Abraham, he, uh, uh, Abimelech, he had a dream, right? God appeared to him in a dream. He says, you are a dead man. Then he gives him a word of knowledge. He says, that man is a prophet. Then he says, he will pray for you. So it protected Abraham. Languti says, all right? Then salvation. Amen. So let's come back. He has a revelation of the future. What is the revelation? A famine is coming. What? It's prophecy, right? But now, where does the word of wisdom step in? He saw the future, but there was no solution. When Joseph says, now, do one, two, three, right? Notice, right? People think it was just great advice. No, it wasn't great advice because if it was just great advice, Pharaoh was not going to give Joseph that level of prominence. He says, there's no one in our kingdom who can think like this. So this was not ordinary wisdom that you could get from a textbook. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, uh, by design, economics and uh, good structuring. No, it was supernatural. You see that? It, wasn't, it, it was supernatural. So when the word of wisdom comes, it gives supernatural solutions for complex problems. Amen? Amen. It brings supernatural solutions for what? For complex problems. Secondly, right? It, what we call prophetic instructions. You'll notice there are times where prophets are prophesying, but then there are times where they are giving something called a prophetic instruction, right? That thing, prophetic instruction, is actually the word of wisdom at work. Because it is giving you directions on what to do. Let me give an example. Here's a woman, she has a situation where her, 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 her husband left her in debt, right? Her husband who was a prophet left her in debt. Then notice what Elisha says. He says, now, now tell me, which school can teach you that? He says, now, go borrow vessels. And then he says, take the oil that you have, and he says, pour, and don't stop. And he says, don't take a little. When she heeds to that instruction, what happens? The supernatural was triggered. So here's what the word of wisdom is able to do. It's able to trigger the working of miracles. Jesus. Here he is. They have a tax problem. He says, go to the first fish. And then you will find a coin. That was the word of wisdom at work. Languti says, alright? So the word of wisdom will always do what? It will provide supernatural solutions for complex what? Problems. Then there's another one. Jacob. Jacob is being cheated, right? By his uncle, Laban. He's cheating him. Then the Bible says an angel of the Lord appeared to him and says, okay, they are cheating you. Do this and do this and do this and do this. Which school could have taught Joseph that, uh, 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 Jacob that? No school. When uh, the angel says, mix the spotted and the speckled and the striped. You see that. And that caused Jacob to come into immense wealth. But how did it come? An instruction, a prophetic instruction. But that prophetic instruction is actually the function of the word of wisdom. Are you all here? So, when you have complex problems, what do you need? I'm helping you. When you have difficult situations, sometimes you are before a mountain here. You ask God, Father, I pray for a word of wisdom in this thing. And the Lord will give you an instruction. The instruction will may be foolish. It may look stupid. Right? And a lot of times will look stupid. But it will produce supernatural results. Sometimes God may say, fast for three days. Sometimes God may say, go, go talk to X, uh, X, Y, Z. And then after you talk to them, the matter will be solved. Or sometimes he can say, go sow a seed. So sometimes the people who sow the seed and then they had a bumper harvest is because of a word of wisdom, not necessarily the obedience to a principle. So, Moto, I, I had my last hundred and I heard the spirit of the Lord say, I must sow it, go, Moto. And then after that hundred rand, like uh, uh, 50,000 rands came in. Lueno usua a hundred rand. You see that? It was a supernatural instruction. Hello? So, word of wisdom will always be instructive. It will solve its essence. So, a lot of times, people can see the future. Now, the future is set, right? It's set. Now, how we escape the set future is through word of wisdom. 
Last, last example of the word of wisdom. Here is, here is Joshua before the city. Mudim I have given you the city. Okay, I have the city. But he still needs what? A word of wisdom. Look at the foolishness of the word of wisdom. Circle the city seven times. And on the seventh day, uh, circle the city for six, seven days. And on the seventh day, seven times. How do you make walls fall just from circling them? The foolishness of the wisdom of God. But you see, it triggered the working of miracles. That an entire wall fell down flat. Word of wisdom. Can we stand up in the presence of God? Hallelujah. Bishop, I know the heat was dealing. You know. The heat was dealing. Praise the Lord. So, so we've, we've, we've just touched one of the gifts. Yeah. But don't you want to have words of wisdom after this? You just need a word of that, an instruction. An instruction. In a second, the word of wisdom, things that would have taken, think about Joseph. Ne? Joseph and his guys would have needed, ne? Pharaoh and his team would have needed to brainstorm for days to solve that famine problem. Sometimes for months. But in seconds, seconds, a word of wisdom sorted everything out. So if you and the Lord can give you a word of wisdom in your own private home, he can give you words of wisdom for people. Sometimes you have family members or people, friends who are struggling, right? The Lord can tell you and say, do one, two, three. And the problem will be solved. Hallelujah. Sometimes in healing, like let's take the example, yeah, yeah, Paul, right? Talking to Timothy about drinking a bit of wine. Now it became a doctor. Let's drink wine for our stomach. It's not true. That was a word of wisdom. It says drink a little wine for your stuff. It's a word of wisdom. So you can have instructions like that. But Murim, our words are drink fish oil. Hello? Or drink fish oil. For the next coming day, drink a, 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 a half a cup of fish oil. Oh, what do you want? Do you want the solution? Do you want? <laughs> You see that? So, it carries some irrational instructions. Ne? Akiri, akiri, akiri eh, eh, wicked things. Ne? Akiri now, we read you the snacks or no keyword of wisdom. Akiri we are. Ne? Praise the Lord. But the Holy Spirit will give you some crazy instructions. But those instructions will trigger supernatural results. Let's, let's talk about Kuli, right? What happened with her was word of wisdom. When the Lord said, sleep with Zamoy, try it. Try sleeping before an exam. Hello. You see, the Lord told her what to study. And then said, sleep now. So when Oka is Zama, that thing, because it's a personal what? Instruction. Praise the Lord. For the next two minutes, I want you to ask the Lord for this gift. Amen. For your own personal life and also for those who are in your life to help people. Praise the Lord. Father, in the blessed name of the Lord Jesus. Celebrate fele mimbra asasi livri gedidiasa. Riasto la mantalia si evre de debasa talava. Father, we ask for the gift of the word of wisdom, O God. We ask for words of wisdom, O God, to land in the hearts of people. Words of wisdom, O God directive instructions whether through dreams visions supernatural knowings hearing or utterance oh god give them words of wisdom oh god words of wisdom oh god give them words of wisdom oh god give them words of wisdom oh god for their businesses for their careers for their families for people in their lives, give them words of wisdom. 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 Let there be that impartation of the Spirit, O oh God, that will trigger supernatural results. Super
supernatural results that will trigger the working of miracles where laws will be suspended oh god in the name of the lord jesus christ Say in the name of Jesus. I believe I receive the gift of the word of wisdom. And from today, I expect words of wisdom from the Holy Ghost. For my personal life and for those in my surrounding. And for those whom I minister to. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you are expected now. Get ne? So when that happens, ne? the word of wisdom plus the result, ne? I want you to come back and testify. Right? So some of you are going to receive it for yourself. Some of you are going to receive it for a person. You're going to tell a person, uh, the Lord says, do one, two, three, and uh, the matter will be solved. And when the person is done with don't just come and tell us okay no the lord told me to say no come back when the result has also happened to the person amen and it's going to happen hallelujah uh, amen it's going to what happen ashu where's mama pin where's mama pin yeah. i mean simple instruction your car was giving you issues right issues mechanical issues i said now go get anointing oil olive oil i call it anointing oil nice i olive oil, okay, anointing oil right now and i said just anoint the car with it right in fact i i was supposed to pray for it and then pastor mike prayed for it right and then you you anointed the car right since then did the car give you problem how did mechanical issues get solved by oil that's a it's a word of what of wisdom so some of you i will tell you all some of you i'll tell you fasting some of you i'll tell you you need to go talk to this person it's those are words of what we call prophetic instructions are really words of wisdom and i'm telling you if we would obey them supernatural things would always happen amen like if the lord tells you every day right rapella from one o'clock oscar tomo rapella ka five to one rapella ka one there's a reason why the Lord is it's not about it's about the the instru- can you listen to instruction? Hello? Here's a king. But king hit the ground. Hit the ground. The king I bet her three times. And he says you should have hit seven times. Because if you had hit seven times, the Lord would give you would have given you complete victory. Do you see that? But what does hitting the ground have to do with winning battles? Prophetic instructions. Amen. Father, I declare the blessing of the Lord upon your people. I declare that they are the head and not the tail. I declare, oh God, they will move in the gifts of the Spirit, oh God. Not just the word of wisdom, but even all now.